the screencast going to work? Okay, it is working. Nice. So originally, I was just going to do like a one-off video um, talking about my drafts, uh, the team I ended up making, or some of the concepts that I had. I thought it would just be easier to talk about everything at once, uh, including the battles themselves. So we're just going to jump right into it. So, my game plan overall this draft was to create a physically based offensive team, and both my picks and my bands reflect this. Gold Mason was going for a special spikes uh, offense oriented kind of thing, so uh, he ended up drafting a lot of very strong special attackers and potential mixed attackers as well. Some very strong physical attackers as well. But, uh, and you'll notice this just from looking at it, a gold ended up being very, very weak defensively. And as you'll see in our battles later on in this video, gold's defensive liabilities end up biting him in the ass pretty severely. And... I ended up taking advantage of his weaknesses pretty perfectly overall in the draft and in the battle. I won't spoil the outcome, but I feel like that uh, just based on looking at the teams, uh, it was a pretty obvious conclusion of like what the result was going to be. Now, to be said, and to be fair to Gold himself, um, Gold had some pretty massive threats on his roster, and we'll go over those threats and the impact that they had on my drafts as we go. So we'll be talking about the bands first. So Gold Mason right away wanted to take out two prominent special checks, uh, one being Raiko and the other being Blissey. Uh, Raiko was pretty odd in hindsight, given the fact that he wanted a specially based offensive team, and Raiko just fits the bill. But I understand why he banned it as opposed to picking it. Um, one, he wanted the opportunity to... Clearly wanted the opportunity to draft either Tyranitar or Salamence or Metagross. Two, um, if he drafted Raikou, he might have potentially lost Zapdos. So, understandable there. Uh, Blissey is a bit less obvious. Uh, Blissey is the most prominent special wall in the game. It's got natural cure. It's got, you know, it's got reliable recovery. It's got all of the utility moves in the game, basically, except Encore. If it had Encore, it would be busted. Thank God it doesn't have that move. And for me, I ended up banding Celebi. Uh, there's actually three reasons why I banned Selby. One, I could Baton Pass. I could Baton Pass Substitute. I could Baton Pass Combined. I could Baton Pass uh, Sword Stance. Uh, two, very annoying defensively. It has Recover, Leech Seed, Natural Cure. It resists water. It is weak to a lot, but Selby is so bulky, and the, the, the power of the moves isn't strong enough adva in advance to really take advantage of it. Like, there's no buffed knockoff, there's no U-turn, uh, there's no physical Tyranitar, uh, there's no Shadow Balls or Dark Pulses being thrown. There are Shadow Balls, but they're physically based Shadow Balls. They're not stab ghost moves coming off massive special attacks of uh, Miss Magius or... Gengar. There's also no Sucker Punch either, so that, you know, you won't be seeing Sucker Punches from the likes of Haunch Crow or Spiritum. So those powerful attacks that would hit Celebi very hard are not present in advanced. And third, it's a massive offensive threat because those stats, you know, both SD and Calm Minds, it could use those for itself. It could attack it could run like an attacking set with baton pass. It doesn't have to be a dedicated baton passer. Um, it could also run mixed sets too, although I don't know how good a mixed set would be. It would I, it would still be very annoying, uh, as I would imagine. Selby could just invalidate a lot of stuff, and for me, 
I will probably be banning this Pokemon very consistently in my drafts, just because it's just really annoying to deal with. Like, it, it, it has so much utility, and unless I plan on abusing it myself, I don't really see be using it too much. And Skarmory is a no-brainer. Uh, because I'm running a physically based team, I want to be able to run just brain dead like set up uh, physical Pokemon. So like my Curse Snorlaxes, my Curse Regirox, my Dragon Dance Gyaradoses, uh, my Bulk Up Hariyamas, that type of thing. You know, my su it just immediate physical pressure. And because Skarmory, Skarmory isn't the physical wall that it ends up becoming in Gen 4 and later gens where it's able to use Roost and run physical bulk and just sit on you all match and threaten you with entry hazards. Uh, in Gen 3, it's a lot easier to make that damage stick to Skarmory. That being said, um, Advance is also not quick enough to where you can just allow something like Skarmory to get three... Uh, in fact, I think in any gen, letting something like Skarmory get three layers of spikes and just allow it to do whatever is a pretty bad idea. So, I just banned it. Because it's annoying, it could wall certain Pokemon that I ended up drafting in two. It's just extremely strong. You don't, you almost lose nothing from banning Skarmory. Especially considering when you look at my early drafts, uh, Skarmory would have been pretty problematic for a lot of these. So, banning Skarmory was the right call. Now let's talk about uh, round one picks. Uh, Gold Mason picked Zapdos, which, considering that he went for a Spikes offense approach, Zapdos makes perfect sense. Fits the bill, fits right in. Incredible defensive typing, uh, very potent offensively. It should be noted as well that you can only use a Pokemon once per draft. So Gold Mason would only be able to use something like Zapdos uh, once per battle. That is noteworthy. Uh, same applies to me. I could only use uh, Storlax and Metagross uh, once per battle. So there's that. Now... Uh, talk about Snorlax very briefly. Oh, that's a video I'm going to have to watch uh, later. Uh, Snorlax is a special wall, but also it is a very potent physical attacker. Uh, Snor normal types in Generation 3 are still incredibly strong overall. Not as much in OU, because OU is littered with a plethora of normal resists, but just in OU in general, um, Uber, not OU, just in advance in general, the Ubers tier, um, UU, uh, NU, and Little Cup are littered with prominent, powerful normal types. And normal types don't really rule the roost in OU, but they definitely rule everywhere else and are extremely strong everywhere else. And the fact Snorlax is stronger in Ubers than it is in uh, OU, which is kind of funny. But Snorlax just has a lot of options, too. It has a very vast move pool. It has Curse. Uh, it has, a, like I said, a pretty expansive move pool. Uh, all the normal type moves that you could want. EQ, Shadow Ball... Uh, hidden Powers, Focus Punch. This is a very strong Pokemon. Very bulky. It is very slow. But uh, I end up compensating for that pretty heavily by surrounding uh, Snorlax. Uh, not only with other special walls, but uh, some of the best physical, uh, physically defensive Pokemon in the entire game. So, I surrounded Snorlax with a very good support cast. And for the rest of this draft, um, Gold Mason and myself were able to pick two Pokemon per round. So, he picked Tyranitar and Salamence. Uh, these two Pokemon are very self-explanatory. Uh, Tyranitar, in, in the context of OU, is the most powerful Pokemon 
ever and has been the most powerful Pokemon in Advanced OU for 20 years of its, of its existence. And Tyranitar's power is still very good in a draft format. It isn't the best in draft because its weaknesses of it being slow and it being weak to fighting and other stuff is a lot easier to exploit in draft than it is OU. But it's still a very potent attacker, still very powerful, very bulky. Sandstorm is incredibly impactful uh, in a battle because it is permanent. It's In Gen 6 and beyond, it's only 5 turns. In Gen 3 and, and 5, uh, that Sandstorm is permanent. It lasts forever. And Salamence... Not much to really say here. It's a, just very fast, incredibly strong, incredibly versatile. It's covered in utility because of Intimidate as well. Uh, Salamence could do it all. And it is a perfect Spikes abuser because of how vast its move pool is. It's immune to Spikes itself, and it is a, an amazing fighting check. Now for me... I ended up drafting Metagross and Milotic. Now, Metagross is a very powerful uh, physical attacker. One of the most powerful physical attackers, if not the most powerful physical attacker in, in Generation 3, period. Uh, now, Steel isn't renowned for being the best type offensively, but Metagross's Meteor Mash is absolutely terrifying to switch into, even for OU, uh, which has the likes of Swampert, Suicune, Skarmory, Jirachi, tons of Steel Resists that are usually decent Metagross checks, but Time and time again, Metagross has been proven to not only be able to overcome those Pokemon, but completely overpower them. And in a draft setting where you could ban those Pokemon, and in the case of Jirachi and Suicune, they are preemptively banned. Um, in fact, in every draft, uh, for the rest of this draft, uh, those Pokemon are not available. Uh, because one, Suicune is overpowered, extremely versatile, way too bulky, way too strong. Um, in every draft format Suicune has been allowed, Suicune has been proven to be way too overpowered. It's just too strong. And Jirachi, much the same, if, if not worse for Jirachi, because its versatility uh, is allows it to just be broken, uh, especially defensively. Defensive Jirachi is dealt with in very specific ways in OU. Obviously, you could just ban around, you know, Jirachi's problematic matchups. Or you could just pick those problematic Pokemon, and then they're no longer problematic because you are using them. Uh, I, I got a little sidetracked. But with Metagross, Metagross, insanely powerful, insanely good stab. Uh, it, can't, it can't use like Zen Headbutt or anything because of the physical special split, but Metagross can also be a very potent uh, mixed attacker as well. But for me, the, the big appeal of Metagross was just its physical power and explosion. Um, explosion on Metagross is absolutely amazing, but because of what I ended up banning and the way how the draft turned out, Metagross, the prospects of Metagross being a very powerful sweeper against Gold Mason, um, spoiler alert, by the way, uh, Metagross ends up being a powerful sweeper versus Gold Mason, uh, more than I thought it was going to be, but it ended up, uh, pulling off some incredible stuff versus Gold Mason. Uh, the prospect of Metagross being a very powerful agility sweeper and just a massive threat versus him overall was too good to pass up and also metagross just synergizes perfectly with snorlax it resists 
a lot of the uh, powerful physical attacks that Snorlax struggles to switch into, or otherwise gives it problems. It does, it's Metagross doesn't resist fighting, but it takes fighting attacks very well because its physical bulk is massive, and none of the fighting types in the tier like taking its stab. And uh, rock moves, Metagross doesn't care. It resists them. Rock types die instantly to Meteor Mash. That isn't to say that Tyranitar and Aerodactyl can't be threatening to Metagross. They absolutely can be. But Metagross is the greatest threat to those Pokemon, traditionally. And a lot of Gold's draft, uh, while he does have good Meteor Mash resists... They are not at all good agility Metagross answers. Uh, the traditional way how to answer Metagross is usually to wall it, uh, so or answer it with uh, strong, very physically uh, defensive water types, uh, so like Swampert, Suicune, Milotic, or outspeeding it and doing a lot of damage, or Okoing it. Uh, Okoing Metagross is very difficult. Uh, it is very difficult to Oko this thing. The only Pokemon that are capable of Okoing Metagross are Fire types. Th that's it, pretty much. Uh, but Fire types have a very hard time switching in, and they do not answer Agility Metagross at all, at all, because they are relying on they are relying on outrunning Metagross. If they can't outrun Metagross, they get it completely annihilated off the face of the earth. And to talk about Milotic very quickly, because we've been talking a lot about Metagross, uh, Milotic is a very potent uh, defensive Pokemon. It can, it has the potential to be very good uh, offensively, because it has the same special attack as Starmie, it has access to Hypnosis, and it has a deceptively good speed tier. Base 87 speed allows it to... Uh... Can you hand me a Coca-Cola, Dad? Please. Thanks. Um, its speed tier is very strong. It allows it to outpace a lot of stuff, including Moltres, I'm pretty sure. Uh, its speed tier its speed tier is just deceptively good. It doesn't get utilized a lot in standard play, but its speed tier is really strong. But for me, it was Milotic's defensive properties that made it appealing. Uh, Milotic has access to instant recovery, one of the few water types to have that, and unlike the frail Starmie, uh, Milotic is very, very strong defensively, very good physical defense, its special defense is incredible as well, and it has a very good, unappreciated ability in a uh, Marvel scale. Uh, Marvel scale ends up being a lot better in draft due to the fact that you could play around status and not worry about sand and spikes as much, because you could ban a lot of like the good spikers and draft a lot of the good spinners and a lot of the good spin blockers. So you could definitely build around Milotic's uh, use of utility. But you, but Milotic, for me, best Mets answer in the game, by the way. Uh, nothing answers Salamence better than Milotic. This is true in OU as well. Um... While Milotic doesn't answer uh, physical ments without, you know, Milotic needs Ice Beam to check uh, physical ments, especially Choice Band Salamence, um, Milotic is the best possible answer to the mixed Salamence uh, variant, which is the most popular Salamence in OU. And it's also just the easiest, most splashable Salamence set. So drafting something like Milotic only made sense. And, um, obviously, as a water type, it does very well in the Tyranitar. Now, obviously, Milotic is not a great Dragon Dance Tyranitar answer, and I knew that, uh, which is why I paired it alongside Metagross. And Milotic also has a lot of defensive synergy with Metagross. Metagross is weak to fire attacks. Milotic switches into those fire attacks and walls fire types basically forever. That being said, it's not the world's best Moltres answer, and it 
and Moltres is a bit relevant due to the fact that he ended up drafting it. But it, it is it is the best fire answer for everything else. It answers pretty much every other fire type pretty much perfectly. And it's a very good partner to Snorlax. As well. Now, in uh, the third round, Gold Mason drafted some very big heavy hitters in both Charizard and Gengar. Now, Charizard was a bit of an odd pick due to the fact that I had already drafted uh, my Lodic. Uh, however, I do understand why uh, he drafted uh, Charizard. One, uh, Charizard is very fast. Uh, two, is an incredible spikes abuser. Every Pokemon on this list so far is grounded, meaning that they're weak to spikes. So even that, though that they could resist Charizard's attacks, um, the fact that Sandstorm and Spikes are going to be in the picture uh, means that their ability to do so forever is incredibly limited. So despite the fact that I have some really good resists to Charizard, Gold Mason could have very well piloted it in a way uh, where Charizard could have been very threatening. Even though that there is a Milotic on the other side of the field, I could only use Milotic one time. So if he ended up bringing Charizard into me when I wasn't using Milotic, Charizard would have been immediately more effective. Second of all, it, it's a, as a fire type, it immediately threatens an Oko on Metagross. Uh, so that value of Oko on Metagross is very good. It's very good. Uh, and Gengar, Gengar is one of the best, yes, yes, continue. I don't know why YouTube does this, YouTube is so strange sometimes. Um, Gengar is one of the best spikes abusers in the game, period. Uh, it's got Will-O-Wisp, Hypnosis, amazing speed tier, pretty much every, every move ever that you could ask for, you know, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, uh, grass moves, Thunderbolt, Explosion, Destiny Bond, Haunt. Pokemon's covered in utility, has amazing immunities and resistances. It's immune to ground, normal, fighting, uh, four times resists, bug. And it's immune to poison as well, meaning uh, Gengar can come in and, and uh, be immune to toxic. And be it being immune to toxic is really strong. And for me, I ended up drafting Regirock. Now, the early Regirock draft may have seemed like a spicy pick, but it made perfect sense to me. One, I wanted to take a physical wall out of the pool. I wanted to take a Snorlax answer out of the pool, and Regirock is an amazing uh, Snorlax answer. Two, Regirock had perfect synergy with Metagross and Snorlax. Not only is it a amazing physical tank, in fact, it is it has the best physical bulk in the entire game. Uh, base 80 HP, 200 defense, pure rock typing, and I think it also has 100 spadef as well, meaning that Regirock is actually one of the best well-rounded Pokemon defensively. It also has access to T-Wave, Stab Rock Slide, which this is a common theme that you'll see in Gold's draft. Gold's ability to resist the move Rock Slide did not exist. It, it, it literally does not exist. His ability to switch into Rock-type attacks did not exist. Now, here to be fair on his part, while he did have Tyranitar and Aerodactyl, um... His ability, like I said, his ability to resist the attacks of the other strong rock types were incredibly limited. And it's something that I attempted to take full advantage of in my battles against Gold Mason. And Reggie, like I said, Reggie Rock synergized perfectly with not only the Pokemon that I already drafted, but just with the game plan overall, because it had T-Wave. And T-Wave was actually supposed to be like, this huge thing that I wanted to abuse. 
Uh, I didn't end up abusing it that much in my battles of Gold Mason, actually. Uh, though, th the option to abuse Paris Spam and just having that option in general was still, like, s something that was very appealing to me. Which is why uh, the vast majority of Pokemon that ended up being drafted are T-Wave users. And Gold Mason's ability to resist the move T-Wave doesn't exist. He doesn't have any natural cure mons. His Heal Bell users are Dragonite, and that's it. And everything else gets T-Waved. And he doesn't have any ground types. And the ground type that he does have, Nido King, is not an amazing T-Wave switch in. Especially when you consider that Nido King's, att like... EQs just bounce right off Regirock, especially Cursed Regirock. That's another reason why I drafted Regirock. Uh, Cursed Regirock was incredibly strong, or just looked incredibly strong into Gold Mason. Not just because uh, Regirock's um, plain chain rock typing would allow it uh, to not fear hidden powers from the likes of Zapdos, Moltres, and Charizard. It could no sell those and just fucking destroy them back that's uh, that's actually the main reason why i drafted Re drafted reggie rock is that because of its pure rock typing it doesn't have to fear instant death from hidden power or other coverage moves like rhydon or golem would uh reggie rock can take those attacks and hit right back and reggie rock is another user of explosion now, in my battle against Gold Mason, I never ended up putting Explosion on any of my Pokemon, but just having that option and, and forcing Gold Mason to account for that was to be just a very strong tool. And Regirock, as I already mentioned, had an amazing, has amazing good typing and really good stats that allow it to be a very, very good answer to normal types, fire types, and just a very good physical answer to stuff in general. And it is another amazing switch into Salamence. Physical Salamence is completely unable to break through Regirock. Uh, at plus one, there is not a single move. Even critical hits cannot take out Regirock. And I did calc this. Uh, a plus one EQ will not take out Regirock. Uh, because it is so insanely tanky. It is so insanely bulky. And that's why I think Reggie Rock, to me, it, it's one of the most unappreciated best Pokemon in the draft. And uh, I haven't watched anybody else's battles, but I hope that other people or the other players are able to make as good a use out of Reggie Rock as I have. And the next uh, pick, since I've been putting over Reggie Rock so hard is uh, Jolteon, which made perfect sense to me at the time because it's an electric community, so it's able to switch into the electric attacks of Zapdos. It's not a perfect answer to Zapdos, but it was good enough. And it's also incredibly fast. You'll notice that this team overall is very slow, and I wanted to put, you know, a very fast, pretty strong Pokemon, uh, like, in the roster. And Jolteon synergized very well with what I already have. It, it resisted the electric attacks that would otherwise give Milotic and Regirock problems. So it provided them like a good defensive net. Uh, supported Snorlax as well. It meant that Snorlax isn't as pressured to switch into both Gengar and Zapdos. It means that Jolteon could pivot in. You know, Snorlax can take, like, a bunch of status, too. Uh, with immunity, it's completely immune to uh, poison. Uh, Snorlax can take, like, the T-Waves or whatever, and Jolteon can pivot into certain attacks. T truth to be told, you have to, you have to time that well, but that sort of synergy does exist. And it's just so fast. It outspeeds Gengar, outruns Charizard, threatens the shit out of it, threatens the hell out of Salamence. Um, it also has that very important speed tier of 394, which means that it, it ranks among the fastest Pokemon in the game. So it ties with Aerodactyl, and it's only really outpaced by Electrode, 
which isn't really doing anything in return against Jolteon, and Ninjask, which normally isn't used as a, like, a choice ban attacker, but Gold Mason ended up banning Ninjask, and we'll get into my thoughts of why he did so later on. But yeah, just a generically good Pokemon. Also, because it sp sits at the 394 speed tier, it means that Jolteon can outrun uh, plus one DD Tar. So, and that is very important because the ability to revenge kill DD Tyranitar for me was a very big deal. As an OU player, um, I am always, and also as a well known offense user in OU, uh, Dragon Dance Tyranitar. And especially Aerodactyl, which is another Pokemon we'll talk about here in a second, is always on my mind. And my ability to deal and resist those attacks is always in the back of my mind. Like, how am I going to switch in the rock side? How am I going to deal with Tyranitar when it sets up? How am I going to deal with Aerodactyl when it comes in? It's always something I'm always thinking. So, just, uh, just to talk about Aerodactyl here for a second, because that ended up being uh, Gold Mason's next pick. Uh, he picked both Aerodactyl and Metacham. And this was kind of like a wake-up call for me in the draft, because at this point, while I was picking a bunch of Pokemon that synergized very well with each other, Aerodactyl was still a massive, massive threat, especially in conjunction with the Spikers that he ended up drafting later on. Aerodactyl is a massive threat. Uh, and there is a good portion of Pokemon that I end up drafting later on that this thing could revenge kill. So, just the existence of Aerodactyl uh, made me pick very smart uh, later on. And Metacham, uh, because I had no fighting resist, Metacham at, at this point was like a... Was like, a, oh fuck, uh, I need to draft something for this because Metacham is a Pokemon of immense physical power. Uh, one of the most physically powerful Pokemon in the game. Its biggest weakness is that it's frail, but uh, if Metacham is coming in and completely annihilating you, um, taking advantage of that is pretty difficult. So, that is also why I ended up drafting uh, Gyarados. But uh, we should talk about Miltank really quickly. Uh, I mentioned earlier... In this video that there was a Pokemon that I ended up regretting drafting and that Pokemon is Miltank because one I never used it and two I found it very just like it, it seemed very good at the time a T-Wave user that fit perfectly with the sort of physically based game plan that I had but uh, as the week progressed and I I because I, I I built three initial teams I ended up scrapping them, and I ended up making completely new ones, and I found it really difficult to fit Miltank on any of those teams. So I ended up not using it. Do I think Miltank is solid? Sure. But I just had a very hard time utilizing it, personally. And if I were to redo this draft, um, I would have drafted Swampert. At this point, I would have drafted both Swampert and Meta, or not Metagross, uh, Gyarados. I would have drafted both of them. I would have taken a really good Rock Resist out of the pool. I would have brought, I would have drafted another very good physical attacker, and I would have paired it alongside uh, Gyarados. That didn't happen, though. And as you can see, Swampert ended up getting forgotten about by me and Gold Mason, which is. Something that Callus himself ended up joking about, that both me and him just completely forgot about the existence of Swampert, which we did. More so, I was hoping that he would just ban it, or just draft it, so I have an excuse to put Explosion on everything. He never drafted it, so... Yeah, very weird. And, uh, Gyarados. Gyarados is very self-explanatory, um... Very bulky Pokemon, amazing typing. Uh, very strange how that typing gets used. Gyarados in in Gen Four, especially Gen Four, 
uh, and Onward is renowned for its water stab and it being a very powerful physical attacker with a water stab. Not in Gen 3. In Gen 3, it, it uses its f f flying stab. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. Uh, it does not use its water stab at all due to the fact that its special attack is bad and the fact that um, all of its water moves are special. If it was able to use Waterfall, Gyarados would be insanely broken. Thank God it can't use that. But um, very bulky, fighting, fighting resists, has Intimidate, um, and it's a physical sweeper, which was very appealing to me because I wanted to load up a, on as many hard-hitting physical mons or physical sweepers as possible. Also, um, it learns to move T-Wave, which I did end up using uh, T-Wave uh, Gyarados in the battle that I brought it. Given uh, the fact that it didn't really do much because it got O-Code by an HP Electric Salamence, yes, this does happen, um, it didn't really do much, but Gyarados had the potential to be a massive threat in the game that I brought it. Disappointing, it didn't really do anything. But um, it was it was still a very strong pick, obviously. Very good into what Gold Mason already had. A f another fire resist, too, by the way. A solid Salamence answer. And uh, because he has no T-Wave switch-ins, um, the Gyarados switch-ins that initially seem good, like Zapdos, Gengar, and Aerodactyl, they get completely ruined by T-Wave. So, is this music playing? Is this like a... What the fuck is happening? Um, real quick. Oh, do I have no sound? Uh, that's weird. Why do I have no sound? Okay. Okay. That was really strange. Oh god, I, I hope... I hope that I, 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 I set my voice registered that whole time. I, I'm gonna be really pissed if it didn't. I'm gonna have to, like, watch the recording back just to make sure. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have to do this tomorrow, which, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, re-recording this a third time. Anyway, um... So, yeah, Gyarados, really strong. Really strong pick. Now we get into round two of bands. Uh... Gold Mason ended up banning Alakazam, which fair enough. Uh, up to this point, his special answers were becoming basically non-existent. He had no special walls to speak of, no Chansey, no Blissey, no Regice, no Red Steel, none of that. Raikou and Celebi are banned at this point, so is Blissey, so the their alternative special answers are banned and he can't use them. Those are the best ones. So him taking out Alakazam makes perfect sense because if I was able to draft Alakazam, I absolutely would have. Uh, and I would have absolutely used it. He also banned Steelix, which was really strange to me because one, Steelix is an absolutely amazing Metagross answer. And it's also an amazing Snorlax answer, too, and he fucking just... I completely forgot about Steelix. And uh, I was very thankful of the fact that he ended up banning it, because I was like, wow, this is a really good Pokémon that's really strong into me and really annoying, and he just banned it. Thanks, dude. And because he banned uh, Steelix, I took this opportunity to ban Registeel. Now, some people might ask, why Registeel, not Swampert? There's multiple reasons for this. One, um, Registeel learns T-Wave, and it is insanely bulky. And it's a lot harder to tech for than Swampert because of its pure steel typing. 
It, it, and plus, Registeel is insanely bulky. It learns counter and explosion. It's just really, really annoying to deal with. Even more so than Swampert. Uh, Swampert, I at least can tech for, or I could just beat it down. There's no doing that to Registeel, really. Registeel is going to be annoying no matter what. And I'd rather it just be gone. So I banned it. And Flygon, I ended up banning Flygon over Swampert. Now, Flygon... Did... Did my... What in the hell is happening? I thought... What? Did, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. I, I hope YouTube is just bugging out and being weird. And that my computer just isn't having a seizure. Uh, oh, I pray to God that is the case. Uh, I ended up taking out Flygon because Flygon, I felt like, was just more annoying. Also, it's a better T-Wave resist. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. I don't know why... YouTube is also just loading slow. Look at this. Maybe it's because I have an ad blocker on and YouTube is just freaking out at the at the idea that I have ad blocker on. Or it's it's my fucking my screencast being shitty again, I don't know. But um yeah, Flygon was just a, another like annoying Pokemon for me. Also, my Bandit EQ answers were limited to Gyarados. And Flygon is rather fast and threatening. And I was like, oh, if he decides to bring, like, Choice Banded Flygon, that's going to be pretty good into me right now. So I I just decided to ban it. I was like, fuck it. I don't want to deal with Choice Band Flygon or Leechy Flygon or whatever else. Don't want to deal with it, so I banned it. Also, it's a really good electric resist. So no, that's another reason why the, the Steelix ban was very puzzling, because it's an amazing electric resist. And it would have given him some utility that he was severely lacking up until this point. But I'm sure Gold had, 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 his, had his reasons. Now we're going to talk about uh, the start of round two picks. So immediately Gold Mason picks Moltres and Starmie. The Moltres pick puzzled Kallus a bit. But it made perfect sense to me. One, he could only use Charizard once per game. And he wanted another uh, fire type to deal with Metagross. Moltres is, is even more annoying due to the fact that it could use will o to burn both Snorlax, Regirock, and Gyarados. And be annoying to Milotic because of its sheer overwhelming power. And Starmie has perfect synergy with his whole special spikes plan. And it's a spinner. He's taking out a very prominent spinner that I can no longer use. But beyond it just being a very good spinner, Starmie is also a devastating special attacker because Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, one of the best speed tiers in the game. Just, just a complete powerhouse of a Pokemon. Very, very devastating. <clears throat> and as for me... I ended up drafting uh, Skeptile, which Skeptile I, I, I picked for multiple reasons. One is, again, his answers to special threats were pretty low. And while he did have a plethora of really good grass resists at this point, Skeptile's move pool is actually pretty solid in like a draft format because it learns Thunder Punch, um, Crunch... It is incredibly fast, even faster than Starmie. Uh, Skeptile shares the exact same speed tier as Alakazam. So, Skeptile actually ties with the likes of Dugtrio. Which, now that I think about it, Dugtrio never got banned, or uh, never got picked. I never realized that. Dugtrio was never banned or picked. Which is. Which is insane, because I have Regirock and Metagross. Uh, 
sitting right there. To be fair, the rest of my draft, except maybe Ten or Cruel, is uh, good into uh, uh, Dark Trio. But just still incredible that he never picked it. That's amazing to me. But um, yeah, Skeptile. That speed tier is what made it so appealing for me. Revenge kills Dragon Dance Tyranitar. It, it's got to be chipped, of course, but you can revenge kill DD Tar. Um, it is a massive threat to certain stuff on his team, like uh, Salamence. I could outspeed it. And HP Ice, boom, it's dead if it doesn't have like a lot of spadef. It outruns Gengar because it has Crunch. It can, uh, it could beat the shit out of Gengar pretty easily. And uh, it outruns Charizard too. And while Charizard seems like a good check, if it gets worn down enough, outspeed, Thunder Punch to the face, gone. Uh, Metacham also gets pretty handily destroyed by uh, Skeptile at, uh, if, if it gets chipped as well. Which is a pretty easy task given the fact that Metacham is very frail. And it outruns Starmie, which was another huge thing for me because I wanted Starmie checks. And my next draft uh, was Regiice. And Regiice is another Pokemon that seemed very good into Gold Mason. You know, he's bringing a very specially offensive team. Regiice is a very good special answer. And also, it is an incredible answer uh, to uh, Zapdos, to Gengar. Not the best answer to Gengar overall due to Will-O-Wisp. But it is a good switching to Gengar. And it is amazing Starmie answer. And obviously Salamence doesn't want to go anywhere near Regiice. And Regiice is a T-Wave user. So there is that. And as, T as we established, it's T-Wave switchins do not exist. So there is that. Uh, and also, uh, Regiice has... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, boom! It has boom, so it can... It can boom on certain stuff if I wanted it to. <clears throat> it's also the... Uh, pretty, uh, maybe it's the... Uh, it's the official mascot of the Kalos server. Kalos loves Reggie Ice. Uh, up next, uh, we're going to talk about the two spikers that he drafted. And these two Pokemon are very threatening. Uh, they were... Dealing with them was quite the prospect in the team builder. I was very intimidated by both of them. Uh, Cloyster, a fast spiker that has a boom, surf, stab ice beam. Uh, rapid spin as well. And up to this point, I had no uh, spin blockers. In fact, I never drafted a spin blocker. And uh, there's Fortress very bulky. The only good steel resist that he ended up drafting. Uh, uh, counter, explosion, bug type, so it is four times weak to fire, so it is uh, it is weak to that. But it very good spiker, very good spinner, has a bunch of utility, heals and sand on like Cloyster, which is very important for Fortress, especially since it's paired with Tyranitar. Now, my two picks might seem very strange into the two spikers I see, but I'll elaborate on them uh, right now. A uh, Hariyama, I wanted another um, rock resist. One because, uh, one, because at this point I was getting really terrified of Aerodactyl. Um, two, I, wanted, I, I just wanted a, another bulky physical attacker. Hariyama just fit the bill perfectly, because uh, Thick Fat allowed it to resist fire, meaning it would be a decent, like, fire resist. Um, Guts, which would allow it to absorb status for the likes of Snorlax and Regirock. And because of its high HP, it would, it would, it would be able to run a substitute bulk up set. Which, in combination with all of the T-Waves that I already have, it means that uh, Hariyama had the potential to be a very devastating late game uh, setup mon, which was very, uh, which is very appealing to me. Also, because it's so bulky, it would have been a lot harder for something like, uh, 
something like a Aerodactyl to a revenge kill. So there, there is that. Uh, and Houndoom, Houndoom might seem like a strange choice, but there is a lot of reasons why I drafted Houndoom. Uh, one, Houndoom is a pursuit user, so it has the ability- Oh, shit. My headset just got trapped and, uh, tangled up in one of these, uh, uh, what are these? It, it, it's the stuff that you use to open drawers. Um... It, it pursuit traps Gengar, which had a, a, which has a multitude of advantages. Uh, trapping Gengar means it frees up a move slot for Snorlax and potentially Mill Tank. Although, like I said, I never used Mill Tank. And as a fire immunity, it means that it can switch into Moltres. Although its ability to deal with Moltres is questionable because Moltres could very easily slot in Hidden Power Water and account for it but that fire immunity being able to switch into fire attacks was very appealing to me and also uh gold mason's ability to resist its combination of stab plus will-o-wisp didn't really exist like his dark switch-ins get will-o-wisped um his fire resists die to crunch basically like they can't switch in so i was like well this just seemed like a very good pick like it's a good offensive pokemon into him and it has that potential boon of uh trapping gengar which i thought was very valuable and up next we're going to talk about the two weirdest picks in gold mason's draft which are nido king and kangaskhan uh, Nido King is a Pokemon that doesn't really do anything into my draft, so I'm surprised he ever drafted it in the first place. I mean, it's got a Rock Resist, and it's a Fighting Immunity, but, I mean, this thing isn't going to be taking on Hariyama that well, and, and neither is it going to be taking on the likes of Metagross, Norlax, or Regirock well at all, despite its ground typing. So, this is a very strange pick. And Kangaskhan is like a decent like support Pokemon. It learns Wish. Because of early bird, it means that um, it wakes up early from sleep attacks, and it could use a rest set. And it could wake up pretty early due to the early bird ability. Other than that, it's very strange pick, especially considering that I had two extremely powerful normal resists in a very bulky fighting type at this point. So the and Snorlax itself, which can confidently take on Kangaskhan and one v one it, especially with its curse set. It's very strange that he would pick it, in my opinion. And for me, I ended up drafting Marowak. Now Marowak might seem like a strange pick up to this point, but it makes perfect sense for me. Um, one tons of T Wave which opens the, the it blasts open the door possibility of a para spam Marowak team, especially considering that the only natural cure user he has is Starmie, a Pokemon that does not switch into Marowak, and Skarmory is banned, Celebi is banned, um, Flygon is banned, um, these Pokemon that would be well, not that Flycon is a good answer to Marowak at all, but the, these Pokemon that could be annoying for Marowak are completely gone. So, its ability to be threatening skyrockets, and it's also a rock resist. Not a very good one due to the fact that it cannot recover with leftovers, but it, it, it does resist rock slide, and it can Oko both Aerodactyl and Tyranitar pretty pretty handedly and because of its because of its physical bulk um it takes on metacham and uh physical salamence pretty well and it doesn't give a fuck about kangaskhan and it doesn't give a shit about nido king nido king can hit it with like ice beam or whatever but marowak has some pretty decent bulk that allows it to lift some pretty big hits even on the special side so long as they aren't like Stab HP grasses or Giga Drains or, you know, stab water attacks. It could live, like, some coverage move slotted for it, as long as it's at full health. 
So for me, it was a pretty obvious choice. The next is Slowbro. And Slowbro, another special attacker. Pretty big threat. Oddly, very, very good move pool. It's one of the very few water types in the game that learns fire attacks. And as we established, Gold Mason's fire resists are Pokemon that don't resist the move fire too well. Especially, what is Moltres going to do? Switch into Slowbro? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um, Slowbro is also another T-Wave user, meaning that if Gold Mason were to ever switch in Zapdos or anything else that can threaten Slowbro, they're getting paralyzed and they're ruined forever. Slowbro is just an amazing, uh, like, Pokemon. Like, it resists, uh, the fire, the fires pretty well. It threatens Gengar. Gengar does threaten it in return with Thunderbolt, uh, and, like, Giga Drain and HP Grass. But Gengar insta-dies to T-Wave, and it gets o code by Psychic. And Kangaskhan is gonna have a really tough time breaking through the likes of Slowbro due to the fact that it's so physically bulky. Nido King gets completely annihilated off the face of the earth. Neither Cloister or Fortress want to even attempt on spiking on Slowbro due to its massive uh, move pool and its ability to completely obliterate them off of the face of the earth. Cloister Spadef is infamously terrible, so. I don't even think I could live a stab psychic from Slowbro. And Fortress gets insta melted by fire moves. And yeah. Starmie is a good switch in the Slowbro, because it can resist the combination of Surf Psychic Fire. Uh but that's really it. Like everything else gets comic either ruined by T-Wave or comically destroyed. It's kind and also it's another amazing Salamence answer on top of the already amazing Salamence answers that I have. It, it also helps that even the things that don't just Oko Salamence immediately, T-Wave the living shit out of it. And... Yeah, Slowbro is great. The only thing I regret is I didn't draft Slow King. Um, over Slowbro, which is basically the same Pokémon but Slowking does have better Spadef, and it means that Slowking uh, would be able to switch into the uh, fires better because of its better Spadef. Uh, so there is that. But Slowbro also has its positives in the sense that it could take on Physical Salamence, Aerodactyl, and Tyranitar better. And it takes the attacks of Metacham way better too. So. In a sense, Slowbro was probably better, due to the, the overall versatility it has over its brother, Slowking. Uh, up next, uh, I think we have to talk about round three of bands, which would be um, Blastoise for gold, which, fair enough. Uh, I, I never drafted a spinner. Actually, I did draft a spinner. I just never drafted a spin blocker. Which... Makes sense, given the fact that I didn't draft any spikers. Um, so yeah, Blastoise, very potent defensively. Pure water typing, very tanky. Uh, refresh, rapid spin, uh, all that good stuff. Very, very good in UU, from my understanding. Blastoise is incredible in UU. In fact, historically, Blastoise has always been good in the lower tiers, as far as I'm aware. Especially Mega Blastoise. And he banned Ninjask. I could tell you right now, he banned Ninjask because he didn't want me doing uh, nin like speed pass into belly drum bullshit. Or neither did he want me speed passing to Marowak. I never intended to do that because I personally abhor the concept of speed pass. Uh, if any of you guys have watched my uh, speed pass video, you would know that I absolutely detest the style. Um, I don't think it's good in OU or anything. Uh, in fact, I think quite the opposite. I think it's very inconsistent. But I absolutely detest the style. I, I hate speed pass. And while I'm not adverse to using it, I, it, I certainly wouldn't bank an entire draft game on something so inconsistent already. And something that I absolutely despise, so... Yeah, uh, I understand the ban, but 
I would have never drafted this thing due to my personal guile that I have for uh, Ninjask and its effect on the ADVOU tier and what it what degenerate nonsense that it encourages. Uh, with that small gripe out of the way, let's talk about my final bands. Uh, Dawn Fan. Very physically powerful um, Pokemon. Ground type. That's It resists T-Wave. It has a very high defense stat. That's why it got banned. It resists T-Wave. And it's a ground type. Meaning it's a very good answer to Metacross. So, and, and Regirock. That's why this, that, this thing got banned. In fact... Had Gold Mason drafted both Don Fan and Swampert over Nido King and Shitty Kangaskhan, uh, things might have gone a lot more differently. Because uh, yeah, those would have been very strong into me. But he gave me the opportunity to ban those, meaning that which, by the way, Swampert getting banned this late in the draft is pretty hilarious, by the way. Meaning that Metagross at this point was a massive, massive, massive offensive threat to such an extreme degree that I had a feeling that Metagross was just going to absolutely obliterate him from turn one or cause massive damage. Spoiler alert, by the way. Um... <laughs> And I, I, Metagross was just, Meta, it just looked so strong into Gold Mason. Uh, all of the things that traditionally answered it, or, or would have given me any problems, is gone. Every good Metagross answer is just banned. So, yeah, he didn't even draft Quagsire, either. He didn't draft anything that's good into Metagross. So, yeah, uh, I was very happy about about my ability to just ban all of the things that gave it trouble uh and steelix is gone too because he banned it so and, and i i am a bit critical of gold mason's choice not to draft anything good into meta uh, i i will say that was a very poor decision on his part you know him underestimating agility metagross and him or him just underestimating metagross in general i do understand that he wanted to focus on outspeeding and ocoing it and just pressuring it with speed but also gold mason did you forget that gold agility meta is the most dangerous sweeper ever when uh it's an when its defensive answers are all gone i guess he did which, fair enough. That just means that he, he hasn't gotten swept by Agility Metagross and OU enough for him not to respect it. Or maybe he has, and he just decided, you know what? He's not, he, he, he isn't going to sweep me turn one with Agility Metagross. You know, that's not going to happen. Uh, another spoiler, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, as I said... Uh, these two being gone also helped out uh, the Regirock game plan a lot too. It made it to where that Snorlax also just looked like a massive, massive, massive offensive threat. You know, all of these very physical, powerful walls are just gone, or I drafted already. So, my game plan of just rolling over him with these physical powerhouses was looking very good for me at this point. And as I spoiled already, that is kind of what happened. Granted, there is context there that we will get into later, but still. Uh, so at this point, uh, he drafted Dragonite, which I wasn't very threatened by. It does have a very massive move pool. And it does have very good offensive stats. But Dragonite is also really slow um, compared to its cousin Salamence. So I wasn't too threatened by it. It also doesn't have superpower this generation or Draco. Um, if this was like DPP Dragonite, I would be fucking shitting my pants. And I would be like, oh god, oh man, this thing is ridiculous to deal with. But it doesn't have that in Gen 3. It doesn't have those immediate 
nukes that it could just drop on you and just be oh yeah you're, you're just gonna get eviscerated and die it doesn't have those in gen 3 i also because i was already so good into salamence i was therefore very good into dragonite as well so i wasn't too threatened by this Brailome, on the other hand i was kind of like oh god oh man my fighting resists are already not that great, and he just drafted another fighting type. And yeah, while I do have Slowbro, um, it's still a very intimidating Pokemon to go against because of Spore. Now, granted, Breloom is not the extreme massive threat that it would later become in later gens. You know, it doesn't have Technician, it doesn't have Stab Seed Bomb yet. It doesn't have Poison Heal either. In fact, Breloom is actually very limited in advance. It has Spore, Stun Spore, Priority Mach Punch, which is extremely powerful. And it has a very high attack stat in every fighting option it could ha it could want besides Super Power. But other than that, Breloom doesn't have much. It has to rely very heavily on hidden powers for coverage. And that means it could only use either Hidden Power Rock or Hidden bu Power Bug. Rock Tomb is garbage, and it doesn't even learn it in this gen. So Breloom's, like, coverage options were so limited that in my mind I was like, okay, I could tech for this thing, it's fine. I was more worried about Metacham at this point, if I'm honest. Uh, Metacham did terrify me. Which is why for the rest of this draft, I loaded up with tons of tons of fighting resists. Uh, which is why my next two picks were Crobat and Gardevoir. Crobat, four times resist fighting, is extremely fast, um, threatens the hell out of Breloom, and also it's just a good choice band Pokemon, because... Uh, I already have Registeel, Reg Reg Skarmory, the best Steel types are banned at this point. In fact, he has no Steels to speak of outside of Fortress. Uh, so his Poison Resists, oddly enough, are really low, uh, which, are, which is strange to say. You wouldn't think of Poison to be something that you would have to account for. But because a lot of the ground types I either are either banned or... Actually, all of the good ones are banned. His poison resists were very low, meaning that Crobat had the potential to be very threatening to gold. And Gardevoir is a very powerful special attacker. It has very good spadef. It has a lot of very good moves. I was before I drafted Gardevoir. Um, I actually used it. Um, last year in OU, and I got it to 17, like, 40. Uh, really good, really good ELO ranking with Guard of Wire. It, 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 it's just because it has such a good move pool. Its utility moves are so good. will o T-Wave, Memento, uh, which even in Gen 3, Memento has a lot of potential to be really strong. Um, Destiny Bond, Taunt, um, insanely good coverage moves. Thunderbolt, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, Stab Psychic, which it has the same special attack as uh, Zapdos and Moltres, so it completely destroys stuff. And yet again, um, his special answers are very low. So Guard of Wire, massive threat, especially in conjunction of Will O Wisp, which he has no answers for. Again, the things that resist Psychic, like Tyranitar, are not going to like getting burned. And everything else gets fucking annihilated off the face of the earth. So up next, um, we're getting pretty close to the end of the draft here. Um, he ends up drafting Venusaur, which was actually a very big threat that I was worried about. Was um, uh, Sleep Powder SD Venusaur with uh, Sludge Bomb and EQ. Uh, that was actually really... That was something that was like, oh god, it, uh, that could potentially be a problem. And uh, Arcanine, which I wasn't worried about at all at this point, due to the fact that I had so many good fi fire resists. You know, not just Milotic or Regirock, but also the two thick fat Pokemon, Gyarados, um, Slowbro, the Tentacruel that I end up drafting like two seconds later. Wasn't worried about it at all. 
Speaking of Tanacruel, I end up drafting it alongside Tauros. Uh, Tauros is very self-explanatory. Um, it has Intimidate. Very fast, 110 speed. Same speed tier as Gengar, in fact. And Normal Stab. Which, a lot of, like, he does have Normal Resists, and pretty good ones. But, if they were to ever be, to have been disposed of in any way... Uh, Tauros would have ripped him to shreds if those normal resists were to ever disappear. Uh, which, again, was another reason why I drafted Houndoom. Houndoom can pursue trap uh, Gengar and the Mistravis that he ended up drafting, so Tauros can spam the ever-living shit out of Choice Band Double Edges. And Tenacruel, which was the only spinner that I ended up drafting, and it was another just special threat. And it is a special threat. It's got decent special attack. It's got good speed tier three. It, it's uh, 328 timid, and it's got rapid spin. So very solid pick overall. Also, I have to use the bathroom, so I'm gonna go do that.
So, let's talk about the rest of this draft, and then let's talk about the game plan that I had. Um, so, uh, Gold Base ended up drafting Raichu, which is a very interesting Pokemon. It's got some really cool moves, uh, like Encore, uh, Surf, and its signature move, Volt Tackle. It can't run any of those moves together, which was a, a flaw that I accounted for. And I was under the belief that he was if he was going to run any of those, he was going to run Surf. And Kingdra, which is, was a really odd choice, considering that I had Snorlax, Milo, and uh, Skeptile, and uh, Regiice, and Tentacruel, all which naturally check, and Slowbro, Slowbro especially. So, odd pick from him. Uh, and then there was, you know, for me, I picked Rhydon, which, you know, suits the whole Paris spam thing uh, just as well as Marowak. And because it's a rock type, it takes complete advantage of the fact that his rock answers don't exist. And Vile Plume, which was a very good fighting resist. As I said, I was trying to load up as uh, on as many good fighting resists as possible. And it dealt with some of the grass as well. As, uh, so, like, it was a good check to SD Venusaur. Um, it was a decent check to uh, Tyranitar, although not the best. And it was decent into Zapdos... And not as much Starmie, but uh, it could take an attack or two from Starmie if it needed to. And it checked the otherwise dangerous Nido King fairly well. It was also a pseudo T Wave user with Stun Spore, and Stun Spore goes through Nido King's immunity. So, yeah, there's that. And we'll talk about the last two picks of the draft fairly briefly. Mistravis, not much to say there. Uh, and Glalie, which m meant that he would have a spiker every single game. Which I was a bit terrified of, but at the same time I realized, well, as long as I... As long as my lead matchups are good into the spikers, and I just have... Immediately threaten him right out the gate, uh, I'll be fine. And my last two picks were, again, more fighting resists. One was Hypno, uh, which completely blanks Braylum, not just because it resists fighting, but it because it is immune to sleep uh, because of the Insomnia ability. And it, and it has access to T-Wave, it can call Mind Pass, Pass, Wish Pass, and it was also pretty decent to Gengar, too, because it was sleep immune... Uh, so we could switch into Gengar's Hypnosis, Venusaur's Sleep Powder, um, and it could decently threaten the likes of Nido King and some other guys that he had that I wanted to be super good into. And Nido Queen, which was a fighting resist that heals in sand, that also had the potential to threaten Tyranitar and resist the attacks of Aerodactyl itself. It also has a very expansive move pool as well. So it, it worked in tandem with the Call Mind Pass thing. With that in mind, uh, that concludes the draft discussion. Let's get into what I ended up building. So, this is what I ended up bringing in game one. Keeping in mind the fact that Gold Mason's ability to resist rock attacks and physical attacks in general was so loose. I went all in with the physical attackers. You know, curse Reggie Rock immediately with a Lumberry and Hidden Power flying to completely destroy Braylon. Uh, at plus one defense, um, Reggie Rock only takes 40% from Metacham's Brick Break, unless it's Choice Band. And it Oko's it right back with Hidden Power Flying, and Braylon also gets equally destroyed. Uh, Hidden Power Flying also massively damages Venusaur. Uh, Gyarados, which had a TWD set with Hidden Power Ghost. Hidden Power Ghost made it to where um, I Oko Gengar, Metacham, and Starmie. 
So, and while also Okoing this thing as well. And I had T Wave for uh, Zapdos, Salamence, um, Aerodactyl, you know, stuff like that. So it was, it, I made Gyarados as versatile as possible. Unfortunately, it didn't really do much in the battle, but it was it was primed to completely destroy gold. And uh, Rhydon, you know, the, it was just a substitute three attack set. Mega Horn for Starmie. Quake Slide destroys everything else. Uh, and then I had Snorlax here with a Curse Counter set. Now, the, the purpose of Counter was... Uh, it was mostly for um, Aerodactyl. So Aerodactyl's immune to EQ and it resists Body Slam. But Counter, it, if it Rock Slid, would just ca oh, Counter, Arrow, Arrow would die. Threat neutralized. Counter was also good for Metacham and Braylum. So Braylum had already slept something, and if it came in and I was at Curse, it would Brick Break me. I would be able to take the attack kind of well to the fact that I'm at plus one defense, and Braylon would get destroyed. Same with Metacham. Metacham would also get completely annihilated. Uh, it also helped a bit with Tyranitar as well. Uh, counter. So. Uh, and then I had Houndoom, so I can pursue Trap the Ghosts, and have something that was just a massive offensive threat. And then I had Skeptile, which gave me a lot of speed, and it would revenge kill certain stuff, while also threatening Tyranitar. Uh, this team was relatively soft into something like Mixed Salamence, but I, I was fairly confident that I could play around Mixed Salamence very well. And, yeah, overall, I, I was just confident into what Gold Mason could bring into me with this team. Uh, the Game 2 team, uh, which I brought, which is right here, was a Calm Mind Pass squad. It led with Agility Metagross, which I talked about earlier, was a massive, massive, massive offensive threat. So at minimum, Metagross would be doing massive amounts of damage to the Gold Basin's team. If I got, like, even, if I even got, like, one free turn, uh, Metagross was going to completely tear him to shreds. And I had a whole Calm Mind Pass thing set up. So I had a Calm Mind Pass T-Wave uh, set for Hypno. Uh, a Jolteon, Milo, a few like good rock answers. Like I had a mixed Nido Queen here with a superpower to Oko Tar. Uh, if I chip Tar, Surf to hit like the Fires and Aerodactyl, Fire Blast to hit Fortress, um, Ice Beam to Oko. Uh, Salamence and Dragonite. I don't think it actually Okos it, but it does massive damage to them. So, it, it, Nido Queen was just made to be as versatile as possible while taking advantage of the fact that it's a good fighting resist and the fact that it heals in sand. And Brother Slow Bro. Never put Fire Blast on it, but uh, these attacks were primed to do a lot of damage. The, this team just was also really good into cold. The, just because his ability to resist attacks of my own was already pretty sus suspect, and his ab ability to also deal with Metagross was also super suspect. So, uh, the special attackers in combination with Metagross, I was under the belief that this would have torn him to shreds. I did not think he was going to be able to beat this reliably. And then the last team was my attempt at a Paraspam. As you can see, Regice, T-Wave, T-Wave, Stun Spore, and then the Para-Abusers, Marowak, uh, Substitute Bulk Up, uh, Hariyama, and then a Spinner, in case I had trouble with uh, the Spikes. Uh, I never ended up using this, and we'll get into why. So these are the replays. Now... This game one was very interesting just because, one, he led Raichu instead of a fortress, and second, uh, this kind of showcased, cause, uh, and I suspected that he was going to use like a toxic fortress or something along those lines. This kind of just showcases just how weak he was to rock, because as you could see here, like fortress, uh, taking the plus two rock slide relatively well, 
but it's under a lot of pressure here because it's not doing anything to Reggie Rock directly. It gets up a spike, gets up another spike. So he has that going for him. He's got the two layers of spikes. But also, he has he goes in the Salamence, and I'm like, okay. Uh, so a rock slide, Kangaskhan gets completely destroyed. And Kangaskhan is doing its best here to stay alive. Uh, now he ends up resting here. And I don't end up rock sliding it. I end up using Hidden Power Flying. Because I thought he was going to be like a sub punch set. So Reggie Rock dies. But then, boom, Rhydon comes out. I already know that his rock resists are non existent. So, you know, I go into Rhydon and I immediately try to exert some offensive pressure on the uh, Kangaskhan. So I EQ. And uh, he goes in the Salamence. I end up rock sliding just to be safe, and it ends up missing on the Salamence, unfortunately. But it's no big deal, because I end up going into my Gyarados. Uh, if he did DD, I would have been able to take the rock slide relatively well. It ends up revealing that it's HP Electric. Uh, and I end up going into Snorlax here. You know, he goes in the Tar, Tar, uh comes in. I'm not immediately threatened by Tyranitar, so I end up cursing again. He tries to bait it in the EQ. I just end up cursing a second time. And at this point, I knew Gold was kind of fucking screwed because his ability to deal with the Snorlax was non-existent. You know, Raichu comes in, immediately dies. Uh, Arcanine comes in, which, uh, because I made... My Snorlax Thick Fat, it just completely no-sells the Flamethrower, immediately starts powering through it. So, yeah, there, there's an interesting exchange happens where um, Arcanine rests, it consumes its Chesto Berry. The exact same thing happens that happened earlier, where it gets paralyzed by Body Slam. It ends up using Feath, uh, which ends up contributing to Snorlax dying here. I think, uh, I think Kangaskhan come. I don't know, Salamence ends up getting sacked here. So, I wasn't too worried about the Mens at this point. I just started attacking like crazy. Uh, he also had Bite Salamence, which is crazy. Uh, he crits and he flinches me. And, uh, he gets crit. So he flinches me and crits me, but I end up critting him back, uh... Uh, so far, I've gotten the very favorable hacks uh, in this in this exchange. So I go into Skeptile, massive threat. Um, and Tyranitar comes out. I know that HP Bug can KO me, but he can't DD on me safely unless he's like in a doer set or something. Uh, but, you know, so uh, Tar dies, gets another critical hit. And then Arcanine is paralyzed, weak, feeble, loser Arcanine, can't do anything. Uh, and then Arcanine dies. So that is game one. Remember when I said that Metagross uh, ended up doing very well into Gold Mason? I don't think I need to really say anything here. I'm just going to let the replay speak for itself. Just, just, just watch. Also, my music isn't playing, which is annoying. It's it's doing that continued watching shit that I hate. But, um... Yeah, what, what you're about to see is... Uh, yeah, ki kind of a stomp on Metagross's part. What you, are, what you see is the fruits of me banning all of the good physical checks. There is no Skarm, there is no Swampert, there is no Steelix, there is no Registeel, there is no anything to stop Metagross from completely rampaging uh, these first few turns. And as you can see, Metagross gets the infamous plus one from the Meteor Mash, and immediately Metagross agilities, and what the resulting gameplay is what you see. Metagross gets a mass raise, Gold Mason attempts to pivot on the, the EQ, or the Meteor Mash, uh, Metagross Agilities, and because uh, he has no good physical check to Metagross, Metagross tears everything to shreds. 
So yeah, um, the the rest of the Calm Mind team never come came into play because Metagross just did this. And if this isn't an example of why you shouldn't have uh, you should have good physical checks in the Metagross, I don't know what is because this is what happens when you don't. Uh, Metagross does this, gets the good lead matchup, immediately gets a mass raise, and agilities and everything is burned to the ground. Metagross tears every... Metagross doesn't even get touched. Nothing get t gets touched. And no, I was not trying to 6-0 Gold Mason. Gold Mason just got 6 0 by Metagross because the circumstantial factors. You got a, you got a not-so-good lead matchup. He, I got a mass raise immediately into the game ended. So, yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm upset about is that I didn't get to use Hypno. Which, you know, I wanted Hypno to have some scream time. But, yeah, this was kind of a stomp in game two and I, i'm i'm not trying to be cocky or an asshole i'm just pointing out what happened this this was a stomp and that's not even close this is probably the cleanest 6-0 i've ever done in any format ever just from from it, from the start of the game no damage even done to my pokemon it's just the game just ends uh it's crazy I have 6 0 people of Jinx on ladder. I, I have 6 0 people of Jinx. But, uh, you know, if you know anything about Jinx, uh, Jinx does sometimes do some silly 6 0 shit. But, yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, I will post a video like this um, pertaining to my draft against Blues, who I do play this week. And so on and so forth. If you guys enjoyed this video, like it. There will be more that come out in the future uh, pertaining to this tour, and ideally I win the whole tour, which will be fun. So, I will see you nerds later.